Hey, this is John. I'm going to give you a quick overview of how to use Sheets to JSON. So the app is installed already. Um, the first thing I recommend you do is click on Help and read through what all of the functions do. Uh, just in case I miss anything in this video overview or in case it goes out of date as more features are added. Uh, the biggest limitation you should know of right off the bat is that um, Sheets to JSON can't work with JSON key names that contain characters other than letters, numbers, and underscores, or key names longer than 200 characters. So for example, the official JSON examples, um, there's an example here that has a dash in one of the key names, and this does not work with Sheets to JSON. So please be aware of these limitations before you start using the app. With that said, um, I recommend that you start off with a JSON structure uh, to import into Sheets to JSON uh, and then work from there. So the way you do that is you get your JSON structure, you copy it, uh, and you want to paste it into cell A1 in an empty sheet. Uh, you can't just paste it like this because it'll paste over all the cells. You can see this is pasted from A1 to A22. You don't want that. You want to paste only into A1. You can do that by double clicking in A1 so the cursor appears and then pasting. So you can see it's just in A1. Uh, then click Sheets to JSON, Import Current Sheet. It'll ask if you want to overwrite the current sheet. Uh, make sure that this is a completely blank sheet just in case. And click Yes. And you can see it's creating the JSON structure in the sheet itself. Uh, this makes it really convenient to change things in the JSON uh, or perhaps set up some sort of uh, some sort of formula that determines how you're going to uh, output JSON. Like for example, I could have a number down here and a number over here. And I could have a formula here where I concatenate this string with uh, this plus this. Um, and then once you've made your modifications to the content of the JSON, which is the stuff in the yellow boxes, you can click on extensions, sheets to JSON, export, and it will render the JSON that you put in earlier, but with your modifications. You can see the stuff that we just set up here. Um, let's look at some of the other options. Uh, you can also export directly to a gist, which is a GitHub gist. You need a GitHub account for this. Um, so let's take a look at what that looks like. It will first ask you to authorize sheets to JSON to read and write your gists. Uh, so if I click authorize, it will say success. I close the tab and then I retry that and it should give me a URL. Um, you should pay attention to this warning. GitHub gists are completely public, um, and they can also, or they're also tied to your GitHub account. So if you use this, whatever information, make sure it's not private, make sure it's not uh, confidential, make sure it's not um, sensitive data at all, because anybody can find it on GitHub. So I'm gonna go ahead and click yes, because this is just uh, data for fun, it's an example. And then it'll give me a URL and I could paste it to somebody else because it, uh, because anybody can open this now and it just gives you the raw JSON accessible directly from the web. Nobody has to be able to access your spreadsheet to be able to read this JSON. Um, the uh, expected or the workflow that I expect people to use is not to di work directly in this JSON structure that's set up here, uh, but to work in some other sheet. Uh, and that uh, works with this these two functions that say JSON sheet. So if I click them now, they're going to throw an error because there is no sheet named JSON. But if I rename this sheet to JSON, uh, then they will work. They will export whatever's in the sheet named JSON, which is the sheet we're currently looking at. And you can see this is the same information that's present in the sheet. So you could set up something like, uh, we want this string here to come from this row in the sheet, this other sheet, and what it be? That's gloss C. Okay, um, gloss C example is going to be the information that we're gonna write out. Uh, so you can set up a easier to use interface for the information that you wanna change in the sheet. So like gloss C, um, and let's say title should also come from this sheet. And we'll say this is the book title. Um, 
and we can call this uh, Walden. So now if I click extension sheets with JSON, export JSON sheet, it will incorporate this text that is now being pulled into the JSON sheet. Uh, you can see title Walden and then glossy example down here because uh, these fields here are being read into this field and this field, which is in turn being read by the sheets to JSON. And the export to gist works from here as well. So I can be on this sheet, make my edits, click on public gist from JSON sheet, and it will give me a URL that I can open up that will have the modifications that we made. Um, if you don't trust the GitHub integration. Uh, if you want to, you can read the code for Sheets to JSON, by the way. It's linked in this documentation. Um, there are several source code links uh, scattered throughout. Um, but if you don't trust the GitHub integration and you set it up on accident, uh, you can click on Revoke GitHub Access. It will just open up github.com slash settings slash applications. Uh, and then you can click on this and click Revoke Access to Sheets to JSON. Uh, if you go directly to GitHub and revoke access to Sheets to JSON, you should also make sure to click on revoke here because uh, Sheets to JSON, uh, there's some documentation about how this works, stores a token that it uses to, uh, through the OAuth flow, um, Sheets to JSON is given a token that it can use to post gists to GitHub. Uh, and it stores that in the property service, which you can read about here. But um, if you don't click revoke here, uh, then Sheets to JSON will think it has permission to post a gist and will send some information to GitHub uh, and will sort of fail silently. Um, the debug functions, I don't recommend using unless you read the source code. Um, but to give you an example, uh, it's kind of a high level overview of how it all works. Um, it isn't based on the structure that you can see here. Uh, so like glossary title, gloss div title, that shows you what the structure of the JSON is. So like you can see this glossary contains a title and a gloss div, just like this glossary contains a title and then a gloss div. Uh, so all this text in white cells, that's just for your benefit. Uh, if you delete all this stuff, it still works for perfectly fine. Um, and you can see glossary is still there. Gloss list is still there, even though we deleted them out of the sheet. Um, how it actually works, how it actually stores the data in the sheet is through something called named ranges, which is a Google Sheets concept where a range can be given a name. Um, so for example, the gloss entry range, if we find it over here, you can see that the highlighted area in this green box in the middle of the screen that is what Sheets to JSON recognizes as the gloss entry uh, value. And this is what it looks for when it uh, is exporting data, um, which is why I recommend starting off with JSON and importing it into Sheets to JSON rather than trying to build your JSON in the sheet directly because you would have to create a bunch of nested named ranges in the sheet, uh, which is just overcomplicated. It's better to, much easier to just write some JSON and import it than to um, try to create the JSON structure through named ranges in the spreadsheet. Um, this also means that it's not easy to extensively modify the structure of JSON that you've imported into Sheets to JSON. Uh, so for example, uh, it would be somewhat difficult to add another field here. Uh, we could do it as an example. If I insert a row and call it, uh, my new row. Well, it doesn't matter what I call this. If I name the range, uh, named range, add a range, that's correct. Uh, we're going to call this uh, my key. And I add something here. I believe this should work. Uh, yeah, my key now has a uh, presence in the JSON structure. So this is easy to do, but more complicated things like creating uh, JSON objects that in turn create, contain several keys of them, their own, uh, or perhaps lists of their own, for example, um, can get pretty complicated. So I recommend starting off with JSON, importing it, 
modifying it and then exporting it. Um, yeah, you may find yourself wanting to add more entries to arrays um, because the uh, array is represented as a named range. So if we find the named range for glossy also, you can see it's highlighting those three boxes next to glossy also, these three here. Um, if you want to add a row to an array, uh, you should not insert a row below the bottom of the array. Uh, this will copy the formatting, but it won't extend the name range for glossy also. So if I type something here and then export, uh, this value that I just typed in won't show up. You can see it's just GML, XML. Um, and that's because the named range wasn't extended when I added the row below. So instead, um, go to the bottom of the array, which in this case is here, and insert a row above. Uh, when you insert a row in the middle of a named range, sheets will extend to the named range. So now if I add uh, something here, and I can also add something here just to show you that it works. Um, you will see that uh, all four of those inf pieces of information are now in this array. There's some interesting information about, uh, or some things to know about number or data types. If you type a bare number into a field, uh, if it's a field imported from JSON, sheets to JSON should be able to tell what the type should have been based on the type from the original JSON. So it should recognize that this should be a string. Well, actually we just added this row. So sheets to JSON will recognize this as a number, even though the other options here are strings, um, which might be a problem if you want all the options in this, uh, all the items in this array to be a string. You can see this one doesn't have quotes in there there's two. So if we want this to be a string instead of a number, we can change the number formatting to plain text uh, and now sheets to JSON will recognize it as a string. Um, yeah, and you can see there's quotes around it now. It is a little bit more complicated if you're pulling the number from somewhere else. So if I'm pulling the number from here to here, uh, from here to here, even though the formatting here is still set to plain text, sheets to JSON will now recognize it as a number and not a string because uh, it's looking at the formatting from where the number is being pulled from. So what you have to do is change the formatting on the source as well. Uh, so you change this to plain text, um, export, and now it should put the quotes around it again. Um, and yeah, sorry, I, I closed the window very quickly, but there's quotes around it again. Um, you can also do this by using the text function. Uh, so I'm going to say I want this number to be converted to text and just format it like that, um, where just a single number is just, it just outputs the number without any decimal points. Uh, if I added some decimal points, you would see now it's putting decimal points after it. But um, if I export this now, uh, even though the formatting is still uh, automatic and not plain text, it will um, export it as a string because uh, Sheets now recognizes that as plain text because it was passed through the text function. So if you're getting a number in your JSON output and you want it to be a string, either change the formatting to plain text or use the text function. Um, yeah, if you have any questions about sheets to JSON or you'd like to ask some questions or need some support. Um, the support is best effort. I'm not making any money off of this, but if you click on the help article, uh, there is a contact link here at the bottom or a contact group here at the bottom where you can email this group and uh, I'll see the email and I can try to help you out. But um, please don't expect uh, too much. I'll, I'll try to respond to emails, but I can't guarantee anything. Sometimes I'm busy. Um, thanks for using the extension. I hope you like it. Um, and if you think it could be improved, uh, feel free to um, send a pull request on GitHub. Or um, honestly, you could also just uh, 
clone the repo yourself and improve it and publish it as your own extension if you want to. Um, I wouldn't be bothered. Thank you very much.